All right, uh, welcome to the Air J the Great uh, podcast show. We've got a special guest on the show today. Um, people, music artist Prada Monroe. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Hey, I'm doing all right. So for uh, anybody out there that haven't um, heard her music before, I'm going to play one of her songs and then uh, we'll get into the interview. By the way, I like this song right here. This song kind of hit my spirit a little bit, you know. I know that's right. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's hard. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, when I... Uh, first uh listen to your uh music i was like uh i'll be looking at titles like when yeah. i first listen to somebody for the first time so i was like that like a spirit lit song right there so i clicked that one that was the first one i listened to and i was had it on repeat for about an hour you know what i'm saying it made me grip. that's what's up i appreciate it yeah <laughs> so uh first off you know just uh tell the people where you're from and uh how old are you Okay, so I'm a fr from a small little town in Louisiana. Most people probably don't know. It's uh, De Quincey, Louisiana. It's real, real small, but if don't nobody know De Quincey, it's 45 minutes from Lake Charles. Usually everybody understand that. They don't know what I said, but yeah. And I am 26 years old. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear your hometown? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to literally say, I think it's, it's the three or four. I think it's three, three intersections. Like, that's it. Stop lights, red lights, whatever. McDonald's Dairy Queen is hella country. It's very like, very black and white. Um, yeah, it's a little country and it's a little ratchet. They can get a little, we get down with a little bit. We get down in the Quincy, you know what I'm saying? But uh, <laughs> to sum it up, like, yeah, that, that's all it is. It, it's, it's a good time though. And we very like, it's a small town, so everybody know everybody. But you know, it's it's a good. It comes with it's good and it's bad because everybody be in your business for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of remind me of where I grew up at uh, when I went to high school. At. Oh, where where was that at? Uh, Anderson, Alabama. It's small too. Ah, uh, okay. So from the south, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. I used to call it. I used to call it a cereal, a cereal box. Every everybody don't have it. You know Not saying? a cereal box, but I get it. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. But so for anybody that ain't never been to your hometown, you know, just kind of describe how it was growing there, growing up there like an everyday kid when you was younger, teenager, like some of the struggles you had to go through just just living life. Okay, so long story short, um, I I want to also put it out there like I was a military brat. So I did move back and forth from my hometown, but like majority of my life, I was raised in De Quincey. So like, I'm so sorry, my thing. Um, so basically my, 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 my daddy, like his family, that's where they, they kind of developed and grew up from and kind of established themselves there. So I don't know, like, I guess having, growing up there, having, well, my, my mom is black and Cherokee and my dad is white. Well, my stepdad, but he raised me. So that that's like my daddy, that's my pops. Um, my real dad is Puerto Rican. So you, it's a, it's a much, it's a bunch of much, but come, like being in the Quincy, them seeing me, it was kind of like, I couldn't fit in with the black kids because I was too, Puerto Rican or some even would say white which I'm part Italian too but I don't know and then like vice versa with the white kids it was like nah like you too black you too Latina so I was like but at the end of the day I didn't really have too many troubles like I did fit in but I never had like my own clique like I kind of just vibe with everybody which which was cool but I also growing up did experience a little like discrimination from certain parts more like the Caucasian side but then they would see my daddy, like when he would pull up to school events or whatnot, I'd be like, yo, what the hell? Like, what's going on? Like, her daddy white, what's going on? And then things got better over time. But um, I don't know, I really, I didn't have too many troubles growing up. I was, I used to be very shy, but, you know, moving around a lot, being a military brat and growing up in De Quincey, look, if you don't speak to nobody, you ain't gonna have no friends. And it's gonna be just like that. Like, they're gonna look at you and that's all it is. And they're gonna be talking about you. 
And, you know, sometimes I had to check some people because, look, they think I'm cute. They think I'm sweet. But don't get my kindness for weakness because it was nothing to check anybody. I'm trying to watch my mouth. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 but, that's what it was. but, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I can relate to that military, Brett. I was in the military for eight years. I got uh, medically retired two years ago, so I bounced around a lot, so I already know how that is. Okay, well, thank you for your service. We appreciate you. No problem. So, you got any siblings? I do. So, I actually, hold on, sometimes I'll be having to recount. I got five, I think. (laughs) But listen, listen, like, it's a lot going on, so my mama had me with my real dad, who's a Puerto Rican. And then I got two little sisters from my dad and my stepdad, um, Jasmine and Taylor. Jasmine's 18, Taylor's 14. I got another little sister that live in Bozier with my real dad. Her name's Sophia. I think she like six. And then I got two brothers that live in Hawaii with their mama, which was from my real daddy and his ex-wife. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I got another brother from my stepdad and his former marriage. Even though it didn't really count, but I still count him as my brother. But yeah. And I don't know if that was five or six. I can't count, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing some, but it's a whole lot of family matters going on, okay? <laughs> Man, I could feel that. Yeah. So as far as um, when you was younger, like what type of activities you was into? Did you play any sports or were you in the band, anything like that? Um, I did play soccer. I was a beast at it. Uh, I played soccer since growing up. So starting at like five years old, um, especially in high, I think, yeah, high school, I played a little bit for two years and then I got injured, unfortunately. Um, two of my teammates, they heard I was going to, they was going to move me from JV to varsity. And I feel like it was intentional, but, you know, I could have just been a universe. I don't know. But I got injured and I was going to, um, my Achilles were really messed up. So, like, the doctor was basically like, yo, if you don't stop playing soccer, you're going to tear both of your Achilles and be in a wheelchair for a year. So either you quit or you keep playing and you already know what it is. So I had to quit. Um, and also I did cheerleading not really my thing because I didn't really mesh well with the girls like I don't know I used to hang out with guys growing up so whatever but I did it for a little bit and I also tried basketball but um we don't got to talk about that because I was not very good but I only played because my daddy was like yo every time you shoot a shot or you do pretty good on the game like I'm gonna buy you a new pair of Jordans I was like best say less that's an even deal you know what I'm saying but I didn't get that many pairs of shoes. But anyways, that's irrelevant. So, <laughs> yeah. So as far as your um your circle and your family, like people close to you, did you have anybody that was in the music business, or are you the first one to take that path? Um, honestly, um, I would say I'm the first. Um, uh, my dad was never in the music industry, but he's a heavy music head. So most of like my influences with music and my tone and my vibe with my own music, I kind of got it from him. Um, but in the industry per se, no, I, I do have a cousin. Um, her name's Miss Exhibit. For, she in Phoenix. Shout out to her. She's the only rapper that I know in the family. But other than that, like, no, I, I'm really the first, honestly. <laughs> oh, okay. So what would you say led you to doing music? Uh, to be honest, it my little sister jasmine the one that's 18 we used to like play around freestyling like clowning okay not even trying to be serious um and you know we were freestyling battle rapping going back and forth and one day she was like mo like you could really rap well that's that's what she called me is mo not prada but she's like you could really rap like you should try to pursue music and and take it serious she's like you already could sing i sing too you already could sing why don't you do both so I was like, bet. So not even the next week, I booked a, like three studio sessions. I got, a, got in a booth. I recorded like a whole mixtape. Mostly it was just remixes of songs that were already out. And then I did like two original songs. And like I got heavy good feedback. And it kind of just went from there. And I haven't stopped since. I've kind of been off and on with the music. But now like I'm back on it. Like I'm dialed in 100%. Like I got that tunnel vision with this. Okay. So as far as uh, some of your favorite artists, who who did you uh, listen to growing up? Um, number one, Kevin Gates. 
<laughs> and then we're gonna get a little more ratchet with it. I love Boosie, Webby. Um growing up, I don't know, I used to listen to like TLC, uh Lincoln Park, like all over the place. Like I didn't really discriminate regard in regards to genre because again, like my daddy was white, so and yeah, he he showed me his sign. So I also listened to some country too, like all of that, Billy Carrington, all of that. But those are like my prime artists. I always got to shout out to them, you know, Louisiana and his <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. So, well, where did you get your rap name from? So, um, originally it was Monroe, and when I was releasing my music some other dude whose name was Monroe was kept coming up on Apple Music. And I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, uh-uh, I can't be intertwined with this. And I ain't not going to do, look, that's between y'all. Y'all can make y'all's own judgment. Go look him up right now. But I was like, hold on, that's not going to work. So I, I did start a YouTube channel. And I was like, I don't know you the lyric by Drake. I mean, not Drake, Lil Dirk, And he's like, I know you proud of me or something like that. And then I was like, oh, proud of Monroe. Like, you proud of me, but... You proud of Monroe, but I was like, oh, that kind of worked. So I kind of just meshed it together. And then again, with like the dude having my name, I was like, yo, I can't just have Monroe. I got to do something else. So I kind of pieced it together and then kind of merged all my platforms with the same name. And then I'm also thinking long term, Prada, if you're watching this, you know, sponsorships from that the designer brand Prada, you know what I'm saying? So that's really it. It ain't much of a big, big backstory, but that's okay. it. So describe your first time uh, going to the studio and recording a song. Like, uh, when did you, uh, around what time frame was that? And uh, did was it easy for you to pick up when you first started recording or was it kind of like a rough patch at first? Um, I'm really trying to remember. So this was four, four years ago. I can't remember if I recorded in Tucson or Phoenix. I think it was Phoenix. Uh, it wasn't really rough for me. I mean, I was still kind of like, learning okay my troubles was counting bars or you know what i'm talking about counting bars and like okay you gotta you got this many bars left and i was like i don't know bro like i'm gonna just hop on a beat and it's, it's gonna work just watch so i was having complications with that um and again as a new artist you know developing your lyricism so some of my old music i would say my bars is a little <laughs> but people like them um but really that, I mean, being an artist, it all starts, you got to just start somewhere. And obviously, like, I still like my old music. A lot of people like my old music. But now me growing as an artist, I look back and I'm like, yo, that, that shit was a little trash. But it's OK. It's OK. It's, it's, it's all right. It has its own little vibe. But it was really that. But I'm still growing with it. I'm still very new to the game. So I'm, I'm still stepping my pen game up. I write my own stuff and, you know, just trying to find my sound. OK. So uh, as far as your process, are you still just strictly writing or do, do you have a mixture of freestyling in between that? Um, like, what, what do you mean? Like, do I mix a freestyle? Like, uh, do you write or you freestyle as far as when you make a song? Oh, I, I yeah. get what you're saying. I mostly write. Um, sometimes the process for me is like, I'll play a beat in my car and I'll start freestyling and then I kind of write it down. So it's kind of a mix of both. But yeah, that's that's really it for that. Okay. So, you know, um, you have to build confidence in anything that you do. So uh, when would you say you had that confidence to know that you really could pursue the music? Honestly, I feel like I've always had it from the jump, just from the feedback I was getting when I first started from my family, from my friends, from like the engagement of my fans on social media. But I'm going to be a hundred percent like real with you. I feel like I've grasped it to like 110% with my confidence with this music. Not even like two months ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you sign to a major if it made sense? So would you stay, stay independent if you, if your uh, when your fan base get big, bigger, mm -hmm. would, you, would you stay independent or would you sign with a major? So I just had this conversation with my homeboy Rock um, a few days ago, and I think I'm not afraid of the independent route 
But again, I, I, I just said it to him. I was like, you know, if it makes sense and the paperwork is right and it ain't no 360 deal, I definitely go with a major. But other than that, I'm cool with the independent route for now. But I understand, too, like the resources and the benefits of also signing with the label. But I also know the cons of it, too. So it, it kind of just depends. It, it's got to make sense, you know. Okay. And the bread got to be right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when you release your first project and people could listen to your music around the city and things like that, just describe mm -hmm. that time when people was able to hear your music for the first time when they know you was taking the music serious. How did the city embrace you? Uh, So the first time I dropped my music, I was actually that mixtape I was telling you about. I was living in Tucson, Arizona at the time. Okay. Uh, I also was born there, but again, still raised in De Quincey, in Louisiana. Long, like I was super surprised when I dropped that mixtape because I got so much love from the city, like so much love, consistent, like people I don't even know just coming out the woodwork, like oh you hard, like you you got to keep doing it, like you could really rap, you could really sing this, that, and the third. Uh, I also was on my homeboy DJ Yours Truly. Shout out to him. He in Tucson, obviously he a DJ. He put me on her. He had a radio show at the time. So he brought me in and interviewed me. Um, I don't know whatever happened to the interview, but it's good. It's, it's good. Like, it don't need to be out. It's fine because it was bad. <laughs> but still, um, when we were there at the interview, you know, he had people calling in, like, and they were playing my music on the phone. Like, oh, yeah, she hard. Like, I rock with shawty. Like, it was a really good turnout. And I was super surprised. So I think that overall, that initial response really kept me going with it. Okay. So uh, have you done any shows yet? I've only done two shows, and that was prior to the pandemic. I mean, we still in it, but prior to coronavirus, uh, they had they were throwing some showcases in Tucson uh, at two strip clubs out there. That's really the only shows I've done, but not nothing like super major just yet. But it's in the works. Trust, it's in the works. Absolutely. So describe the music scene in your city like uh... – for anybody that ain't never been there, just describe how the music scene is there and do a lot of artists collab with each other or do people just be minding their business? Um, like in my hometown, you mean, or like where I stay now? Uh, just hometown and where you stay now. Okay, so my hometown, there's not really a music scene in the Quincy, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> like everybody listen to Gates, Boosie Webby, and then they listen to their country music. There's not... I. Honestly, I haven't met really many any artists in De Quincey, like at all. I mean, they might do music now, but I wouldn't know. Um, so I would feel like in De Quincey is kind of non-existent. Now, 45 minutes down the road, Lake Charles, oh, definitely there's a scene for that. They're, they definitely more on the music wave. Um, but I can't talk much about it because that's not where I'm from. But regarding to where I live now, so I stay in Houston now. Um, I don't know. I'm still kind of learning the scene myself. I see like it's a big city, but it's a small community regarding artists. Everybody kind of just mesh, like works together, sticks together. And it's the music wave is a little different. It's very like old school trap music or more like club bangers only, or you got to spit a certain way or they not really rocking with you. And I kind of see, and I'm not talking down on Houston. Like I rock with Houston for sure, the music scene. And I know it's something I got to adapt to as an artist from Louisiana. Um, but I just feel like they're not very versatile in the sense of what they accept. So it's kind of hard as a new artist to get more pushed out in Houston and accepted by the crowd, but it's going to come, but you know, life lessons, you just figure it out. You learn, you learn your way, you learn your path. Okay. So, uh, what would you say, um, is your most successful project so far? Um, well, so I haven't really dropped too much. I wouldn't want to necessarily say project because I mean, the only project I've really dropped is that mixtape and that was cool. Uh, the I could tell you like single wise, my most successful. So I did a remix to Homebody uh, by Lil Durk. It's only on SoundCloud. That, I don't even know. I maybe have like 20,000, 30,000 streams, which still not be up. Might, might, might not be a lot to the bigger people, but for me with no marketing, no promotion, just being me, that's a lot, you know? Um, and then I'm gonna just speak in a future tense, like my new EP that's about to come out, who baby, it's some heat, it's some heat, okay? It's some heat. And my last uh, 
well, remix freestyle that I just dropped. Uh, excuse my language, but it's called Lil Whore. I'm telling y'all right now, it's about to be big. It's about to be big. So, yeah, that's that's it for that. <laughs> So uh, kind of um, list some artists that you work with so far and uh, some artists that you want to work with in the future that people might know. Um, who have I worked with? I worked with my homie Rock. Um, I think he goes by Rock just by itself. Yeah, Rock, he's based in New York. I hopped on one of his songs and my boy Uchi from Phoenix. Okay. And I, I haven't really worked with many anybody no, I haven't worked with like many people much. And uh, in the future, Kevin Gates. <laughs> y'all you y'all should have known that was coming. Kevin yeah. Gates, Drake, um, Cardi B, Nikki, and I already know that's gonna be a whole how you gonna say both. Look, we ain't get into that, okay? Okay, but long term I, I can see myself working with them. As long as they're versatile artists, like I'm with it. Okay. So for all your fans out there, uh, just explain, list some things you like doing in your spare time when you're not doing music. I'm a shopaholic. I'm going to be honest with y'all. <laughs> I got a big problem. I'm all about self-care. So you can catch me any week. I'm consistently getting my lashes done, my nails done, my hair done. Like, you know, this, day and the <laughs> third, okay? Um, I like to travel. If you follow me on social media, and if you don't now, go ahead and follow me. It's Prada Monroe with two E's. You'll see I travel a lot. So I'm all over the place. So whether it's domestic in the U.S. or I'm international, like you can catch me in Germany next week or this, that, and the third. You just never know where I'm at. But that's mainly it. I'm On, an, on another note, I'm really a homebody. Like it wouldn't, it wouldn't seem like it, but I'm really a homebody. I like to just be home, eating good food, watching Netflix any other time. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up yeah, so uh what what is your short and long-term goals as far as like what do you want to accomplish short i literally just want to get my ep out and i want it to be successful i want it to be really well i want people to accept it and kind of rock with me and get it pushed as much as i can and you know trying to show the people that i'm really dialed into this so when, when it comes to not only getting the EP, but having music videos, good content, good marketing, like the whole push and building my team is my short term goals right now. Cause I don't have that. It's just me, myself and I, I don't have a manager. I don't have a go-to engineer producer, you know, the, the whole nine, the whole nine. Um, so working on that and then long-term again, you know, if I could stay independent, great. But if I could get signed, that'd be even better. So that's really my long-term goal. Hopefully I can lock in a deal with a record label that appreciates me as an artist and ain't trying to play with me with the numbers and the contract and the bread. So that's really it. And just going hard with it, you know, showing people really who Prada Monroe is to the entire, like the whole extent, more than what y'all already see now. Mm -hmm. So um, you say you um, about to drop an EP. Uh, do you have a, a, a name for it? Uh, any features on it or did you or I, you want to talk about it I don't I don't and because I don't have it all together I ain't even gonna speak on it I'm you know I'm gonna let it's just gonna organically flow and y'all gonna find out when I drop so definitely tune in all right, do, do you have like an estimate time frame like the next three or four months or something like that or actually we're trying to get it done sooner than that so I'm aiming for December if not early January, late January. But I'm really trying to get it all in motion. I literally need two or three more songs and it's done. So easy. Okay. So as far as the rest of 22, uh, 2022 and uh, 2023, beginning 2023, just list some things you got coming besides the EP. Um, I have my music video for Lil Horror that's supposed to drop next month. Um, I'm letting my, my videographer do his thing because he kind of behind, but it, it's going to come out. So that's coming out. I got a music video I'm finna drop for my new track called Dubai. That's going to go crazy. So really just a lot of like music videos, more content, more me flexing on the gram, being cute. <laughs> uh, but that's really it. Yeah, just y'all going to see more visuals from me as well as music, but more visuals for sure. Because I know that completes the entire package and I know I was missing that. Okay. 
So how how do you want people to perceive you? Oh, let me wash my mouth with this. Um, I want <laughs> I want to be seen as like that fill in the blank that girl. Um, somebody that's super confident. You know, I'm gonna talk my sh- and I'm gonna back it up. Um, I'm all for like women empowerment so you will hear that through my lyricism and it's not to bash men because some men might take it as that but it's like I really have a reasoning behind what I say when I spit my lyrics especially like my latest track Lil Horde like it's not to talk down on men but it I wanted to show a reflection of like our perspective of like how us women feel sometimes when men talk down on us and bash us and call us out of our name so I'm like I want roles to reverse a little bit so you'll see that too um I don't know. I mean, I just want people to see that, see me as like, you know, I'm, I'm independent, I'm powerful, very motivating and uplifting for others. And, you know, I don't care what nobody think. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to be me at the end of the day. So you can rock with me and we can ride this way together. Or you can you can <laughs> watch and hate from afar. And it's cool. I love you too. Because you ain't got no haters. We ain't patting. And, and that's what it is, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, uh, right now, just um, any last words to the people that you uh, want people to know what you got going on and um, let people know how to find your social media, things like that. Okay, well, I just, again, I'm going to say it again. Um, my, my latest track, Lil Horror, is already out. It's on all platforms. Go check it out. Um, the video coming soon next month. Be ready for that. Go ahead and find my YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe click the like button on a few of my videos show me some love and you know get them notifications going as well as um if you can't find me it shouldn't be too hard but it's Prada Monroe Prada like the brand Monroe with two e's at the end I'm on Instagram and I'm not really on anything else so I should be the first page that pop up but tap in with me and also I just want to end this with like overall like whatever path anybody out here is trying to go go with and achieve their dream the world is in your hands like you can achieve anything but you got to put in the work for it it ain't ever going to be handed to you but as long as you hustle put in your work you're going to be straight trust and believe in yourself and the universe gonna manifest it for you and it's going to be there it's waiting for you you just got to achieve it yeah absolutely you know i uh, appreciate you uh coming on the podcast you know i do I record almost every day. You know, this has been a real busy week for me. This is probably like the eighth podcast I did in the last four days. Oh, wow. Wow. I well, I appreciate you. And, you know, I'm going to show you some love. And thank you so much for having me. And I'm going to get you with that drop. I promise. I'm going to get you the drop. Mm-hmm. We, we talked about it. We gonna get it. I'm going to get it. I got you. <laughs> but thank you so much for real. And, uh, you know, I appreciate all my supporters out there. We almost had 2,500 subscribers on YouTube and six uh, digit uh, views on YouTube. And um, I appreciate uh, everybody being on the lookout November 7th. Uh, my biggest interview drops on November 7th with uh, Derez Deshaun. Derez Deshaun drops on November 7th. Uh, free band test future artist drops November 21st. And uh, DMX artist One Shot Deals drop on November 14th. Uh, so I need everybody to stay on the lookout for those because I know uh, I just interviewed Shotty Low Jr. That one did well. So everybody, um, appreciate the support. And, you know, uh, anytime you want to come on the podcast, you know, you can uh, hit me up anytime. You know, I record almost every day. You know what I'm saying? And I uh and I don't just do real thing uh just interviews. I talk about real stuff too, like whether that be relationships, child support, uh should you kick your kid out of 18, anything <laughs> at all, right? <laughs> I'm across their everyday life. I don't talk about it, especially uh mental health, because you know, went through a lot of mental health in the military. And I just think that's just some absent amongst us. Like a lot of people don't address that mental health aspect of life. So that was one of the reasons I started a podcast so people can um, know that people go through similar things, you know, even whether they from the same background or different background. So. For sure. Well, I want to be on one of them podcasts because I'm real big about mental health too. So holler at me again, okay? We're going to dial back. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you kind of remind me of uh, you remind me of Cardi in a way, like oh her, her personality. God. Like you be doing her uh, her personal. Oh like it's so fun. <laughs> I was like, nah, this is like she acts just like Cardi off uh, Love and Hip Hop. I get a comparison all the time, but look, I'm proud of it, okay? I really like this. I really like this. Like, ask my mama, ask my family, I really like this. Like, it's not an act, I promise you. Ask my friends, so, but I get it. I can see it. I can see it. She cool, though. Shout out to Cardi. <laughs> yeah, I was like, dang, this is the first time I seen somebody do something like this. <laughs> like, um, That's um, my um. twin. <laughs> yeah, that's very authentic. I appreciate it. Always. That's the only way to be. Only way to be. Oh yeah, yeah. I got to come out there to uh, uh, Houston. I said I was gonna start pulling up on people. I just started doing in person podcasts this week, so you know. Pull up I, on I, me. I ain't <laughs> never up been to Houston. Me. I ain't oh. never been to Houston. I've been wanting to come because I like people keep talking about the turkey leg cut up here. People that that my homeboys and stuff that been uh, been down there. Yeah, I heard it's good. I still haven't even been myself. I'm still learning Houston. So, but yeah, come on, slide, pull up on me, hit me. We're going to have a good time for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, did you, uh, well, hold on. Let me wrap up the episode and ask <laughs> a question. This concludes another episode of Eric J. The Great uh, podcast and stay on, uh, on the lookout for more dope content. <laughs>